In 2018, Turkey launched its own space agency with bold ambitions to join the exclusive club of space-faring nations. And now, as a follow-up, the country has unveiled a 10-year program not only to develop its homemade launch capabilities, but even to go as far as the moon. And the timetable is tight, 2023. Turkey will celebrate its centennial and will hopefully see a joint Turkish rocket and probe reach the lunar surface. Also in the work is a spaceport that could be a stepping stone into making Turkey a launch hub for commercial satellites. So, what needs to be done to reach these goals? To answer that, I'm joined from Istanbul by the head of the Turkish Space Agency, Serdar Hussein Yildirim. He'll also directly oversee the recently unveiled 10-year space program. Mr. Yildirim, welcome to Straight Talk. It's good to have you on the thank you, thank you. program. Why is Turkey aspiring to go to space? Uh, this is a, as you said, space-faring nations have a strong capability in space. And as Turkey, uh, we set ambitious goals with our national space program. And I see that uh, we have a motto that says, uh, those who have no trace in space will have no say on Earth. Mm -hmm. So we believe sincerely in this. So uh, we are trying our best to represent our country in Turkey in space. So could you talk to us about the roadmap uh, before you? What is the primary and most important mission of the program? Yes, of course, the first uh, mission, the most important ambitious mission is uh, the moon mission. Uh, the final mission is uh, till end of 2028. Uh, bringing a uh, lower on the surface of moon and uh, doing some scientific experiments. Mm -hmm. But before that, as a uh, secondary goal, I would say, or a step uh, for that main goal, in 2023, we will touch the moon. Uh, of course, it's an uh, aggressive uh, timing, I know about that, mm -hmm. but we are starting from zero. We, are, we have already uh, some steps taken. Can these goals be achieved? You just mentioned they're aggressive goals, but can they be achieved with the set timetable? And what challenges lie ahead? Uh, of course, 2023 is a challenging time, but uh, the rocket engine, a hybrid engine, which is developed in Turkey, fully developed in Turkey, 100%, uh, is ready. So mm. we have a very strong advantage uh, to hold the timing. Uh, but, uh, of course, there's some uh, limit limitations, uh, but I think we will overcome them. So we know that Turkey has enormously invested in its uh, defense industry. So how much time does Turkey need to, to develop its homemade rocket capabilities to launch satellites? Uh, depends, but we have, want to see this in 10 years period mm. uh, in our first uh, unveiled uh, national space program because it, it's uh, going up to the uh, end of 2030. And up to this date, we want to see our spaceport operative. So the uh, Turkish president, Recep Tayyip Erdogan, also talked about a, a global cooperation in developing uh, Turkey's space program. Which countries are most likely to cooperate with Turkey and what their contributions would be? Of course, there are two categories. One uh, category is uh, space-faring nations. Uh, already, the, I, I call them the first league, uh, as, such as US, uh, Russia, uh, European Union, Japan, China, and India. Uh, we have a good relationship with all of them. But of course, not only these uh, big nations, big space nations, mm -hmm. we also have good relations with some uh, ambitious nations, such as Turkey, to come close to the uh, first league. So uh, we are in touch some 20, uh, 24, 25 countries uh, for the time being. And uh, we have really good relationships and uh, we see a good uh, opportunity of collaboration. Could you name some of them? Yeah, of course. So first of all, uh, our neighbors, Azerbaijan, Kazakhstan, Ukraine, uh, maybe uh, I can name also from some uh, European countries. Mm -hmm. Italy uh, is very much interested, Spain, uh, Hungary. Uh, I can call many, but uh, I don't want to limit them. <laughs> okay, so um, President Erdogan and Elaine Musk have also been 
in close contact lately and Turkey is working with SpaceX. Is this a sign that Turkey is also interested in uh, the commercial aspect of space mission? Of course. This is one of our main goals. We want to uh, improve the ecosystem uh, to compete in the uh, in space economy. This is very important for Turkey. Mm -hmm. uh, SpaceX is a very good example for that. But of course, they made huge uh, investments and uh, improvements. We are also intending uh, such an uh, approach uh, to uh, space economy. So, uh, Mr. Yildirim, will this project offer incentives to Turkey's engineers and scientists to stay here and reverse the brain drain, which we have been, unfortunately, witnessing lately? Definitely, definitely. Uh, I don't believe any Turkish citizen would go abroad when we uh, bring them uh, good opportunities to realize their goals uh, uh, for, the, uh, for their lives, career lives. So uh, I, I sincerely believe that many of them will come back and uh, work in Turkey. So will you allocate some grants, let's say, for Turkish doctoral students to go abroad and study there and make them come back again? We'll do that, but not only that. There are already many, many uh, scientists, uh, scientists working abroad in many countries. They are also interested uh, to work in Turkey, but we must first establish uh, the main uh, opportunities for them. And the establishment is very important. When we first uh, achieve this, then uh, they will, uh, um, uh, I am sure they will come back and work for their country. Mm. Recently, three countries have sent probes to Mars and we've seen dramatic pictures and uh, videos uh, from the Red Planet. Can you talk about those missions help inspire young people as well as Turkey's ambitions for a space program? It is really exciting. Uh, I, I also personally uh, been excited when I see the uh, pictures and videos from uh, Mars. But uh, we must also be realistic. For Turkey, the main, uh, the closest goal is moon. Uh, we want to reach moon and uh, uh, use moon as a very important experience field, experimental field. Mm -hmm. uh, and then maybe we will also consider to go asteroids or Mars or any other uh, celestial objects. But uh, first of all, for this 10 years time, we want to uh, reach moon. And I already see that uh, young people in our country uh, who already reaching me many, from many aspects, and they are very excited and uh, they want to work in this field. So will you employ, uh, let's say, specific strate strategies for young people or to um, oh, raise to public them. awareness among them? We, are, we have already some projects uh, for the public awareness and uh, to improve the uh, human resources in the space field. Mm -hmm. uh, and I, I, I can say we have very good responses on that. So, Mr. Yildirim, how will this mission impact Turkey's infrastructure, technology and human resources? Uh, big goals like a moon mission or sending an astronaut to uh, ISS to do some scientific experiments or uh, some global positioning system, uh, regional, global, uh, regional uh, positioning system, etc. Such goals like this uh, ambitious goals are uh, exciting. And they will choose the uh, relevant fields to work and they will work hard to achieve the goals. And I believe, I sincerely believe, not only Turkish economy, but Turkish technology and in every aspect, our country uh, will uh, go in upper league. So we live in a time when countries are cutting their uh, space spending. What do you make of Turkey's move? Is timing right? Of course, uh, I think the timing is perfect. Uh, when we, we, we have no uh, luxury to lose this time frame, uh, but we are doing our best uh, to do uh, this in a, uh, how can I say, uh, foreseeable, foreseeable in five, six, and ten uh, years period, and uh, to uh, reach our success uh, story, to build our new success story, and for the, our uh, younger generation, it will be, I think, very good achievement. 
Given Turkey's foreigners to the equator, it seems it wouldn't be very cost effective for Turkey to build a spaceport within its boundaries. Are you considering any options outside Turkey? Uh, our main option is outside Turkey, I would say, because uh, Turkey's geographical position is not uh, compatible and uh, competable with uh, the bigger spaceports. So, but we have good opportunities, uh, international collaboration. Uh, we have um, more than one uh, options, and we are working on it. All right. So, when do you think Turkey will be able to stand as an important player in the League of uh, Global Space Race, if everything goes well? Yes, if everything goes well, uh, and at the end of this period and the end of the decade, so uh, in 2030, we will be real space force, I can say that. All right, Mr. Yildirim, unfortunately, we'll have to leave it here. Thank you very much for joining us on Straight Talk. Thank you also.